this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you for joining me again today. Um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK and um, we've got a pro new project for you today. Just to say um, that everything that I use today will be is in our catalogue at the moment. It's current product and you could order it um, via my shop. If you go to my blog, which is paperdaisycrafting.co.uk there's a link at the top and a little tab that says shop online and that's the quickest way to get through to my shop should you want to order and if you do want to order here is my monthly shopping code z7rv6g6ea and that's my monthly shopping code for march and what that means is that if you use that code we will you'll help me to collect together um stamping rewards and um, then I can send you a free gift. Sorry, getting distracted here. I can send you a free gift the following month. I'm just getting ready to send out my February um, thank yous at the moment for customers that shopped with me in February. But anyway, today this is our project. This is a card I posted on a blog hop last weekend. Um, it's a fancy fold. You can see it's got quite an interesting mechanism, but it's quite easy to make and I'm going to show you how to make it. I did do a, a video of this a couple of years ago um, and I used metric measurements, but because our trimmer now only has um, imperial measurements down here and you need to use this side, um, then I'm doing it in um, inches today so to make it a bit easier. So anyway, what do we need to do? I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to take a sheet of our thick basic white cardstock and I need to cut it to 11 inches by five and a half inches. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do five and a half inches this way. And I've just remembered I meant to change the blade before I came on today because my, my blade, which I've had in ever since I've had this trim, I haven't changed it yet, but it is beginning to get a little bit blunt and leaving a bit jagged edges on my paper. So eventually, it's not bad, you can see that's not a bad cut, but it's just not quite as crisp as I would like it. So I might change my blade quite soon. And then 11 this way, which means I'm just going to cut a tiny bit off at the end here less than an inch off just measure that up get that lined up and that's going to be our card blank but before I put my trimmer away we are going to do some cutting if I oh, I just want to get that in there um, if I show you this card blank or maybe on the back you can see that I need to make some cuts not all the way along and that's why our trimmer is great because it's got this lift up blade you can place the blade wherever you want and make a part cut which we you wouldn't be able to do if you had a guillotine cutter or something like that even a rotary cutter that would be very pretty tricky to do so our trimmer makes this very easy to do these sorts of cards so what we're going to do is we're going to do these two cuts first of all and they need to be cut from four and a half down to 10. So, and I think an inch, at, a, at an inch, I haven't put that measurement down, but I'm thinking fairly sure it's an inch in. Um, so yeah, so I'm measuring an inch from here, from the cutting blade to here, that's an inch. And then I'm gonna bring my blade to four and a half, I've moved it now, um, to four and a half inches which is there so the slot on my blade there's a little slot on my blade I'm going to try and line that up with the four and a half inches slot and then I'm going to cut down to ten inches so I'm going to go all the way down here hope that's still on camera to ten inches let me push that up a bit and you see I've got down to ten so that's the first cut done and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to do the next one at four and a half inches so it's going to be the same distance from the edge so you could turn it round and do it, at, um, turn it over and do it an inch again, but that should be fine, I think. Yeah, that's about an inch. Yep, just checking. You could measure it from here as well, so you could measure to an inch here, which would make it. There. And again, we're going to cut from four and a half to ten, and that's one of the trickiest bits done. Um, and so there are cuts so partly cut like that what we're then going to do is turn it on its side and what we need to do is you need your cutting blade out of the way and we're going to 
going to um, score at four and a half inches. So we're going to line this up with four and a half inches, but we're only going to score up as far as the cut that we've done. We don't need to go all the way across. So just cut, scoring there and then on this bit, scoring there. And that was at four and a half. And we're then going to go at nine inches. So I'm going to have to open my arm again. So go at nine inches. Yep. And again, only up to the cut. So not all the way across. Don't score all the way across, just the two outside panels that you've cut. And then lastly, you need to do that at 10. And that's it, I can put my trimmer away now. And so what we're going to do, is we're gonna take a bone folder, oops, sorry. Find my bone folder. Must have a part there they all are. I say I must have. So first of all, now you want to be careful because you only want to bend the score lines and not the rest of the card. Um, so this is going to go like this. So it might be easier to do it without the bone folder to start with. I'm going to bend this like this. First of all, just make that a nice clean fold. So the rest of the card will bend at the minute. That's all right. So that's that one. And then on the other side, do the same. So... This is the trickiest part of the operation, really. Oops, got away from me. There we go. But believe me, if I can do this, you can do it because I'm not the. And then just these two bits down here. And there. And then if we squish that over. Oh, I meant to have fold done another fold, that's why. Okay, we need to do another score line. I wondered why that wasn't working. So five and a half from the bottom. Let's bring my, my trimmer in again. <laughs> who, was, who was it commented on my blog the other day that they like my warts and all videos? That's just as well, isn't it? I forgot this very important score line. So, yeah, that's right. So this time you're scoring between the two cuts in the middle, the middle panel. There we go. You can tell that um, fancy fold cards aren't my forte, can't you? There we go. There, that's better. And that law lays down nicely now. This will fit in a normal um, six by six envelope that are quite easy to come by. There we go. That's our that's our card blank. That's all the mechanism done. I hope you can follow that. I will put the measurements as far as I can on my blog. Um, yeah, don't forget to do that last um, score. I need to write myself a little note to remember me to put that on there. Now, we're going to now uh, uh, decorate the panel. So first of all, we're going to do the side panels and the bottom panel. And those are all going to be a quarter of an inch smaller. Sorry, I just need to grab my paper that's gone for a walk. Um, a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual panels on our card so the bottom panel which if you're doing if you've got a directional paper and you want it all to be the same directional which I have you can see here you need to do the bottom panel first cut that bit off first and it's going to be three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter five and a quarter inches so three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter that's our bottom panel. So that is going. You can see I'm using different colours for this one. Didn't say that before, but I'm going with bright because I, I've had a bit of a phase of um, pastel, but I'm thinking I'm going to be back into brights for a little while. So I'm going with very bright colours today. So this is probably the brightest in our collection, which is um, ma Magenta Madness. Um, so then we're going to cut another panel that's three, three quarters by four and a half this time. So three quarters, we need two of these, so I'll do another one and then we'll trim them both off at the same time. Quarters 
like three quarters. And four and a quarter, I think, here. Four and a half. Good job I looked. I have got the measurements written down here. And four and a half. There we go. So those are going to go along there. Hmm, that's interesting. That seems a bit long. Hmm, I think I need to cut off another quarter of an inch off those. I must have the measurements wrong. Let's just cut off another quarter of an inch and see what happens. Ho hum. Oh, and I've cut this one the wrong way. Ho hum. Let's do another one. We will get this right in the end. See? If this was a perfect video, you'd all be sitting there thinking, oh, you know, wonderful. Oh, there we go. That's... Oh, no, I hadn't cut it wrong. That was my bottom panel. That's my bottom panel. <gasps> Silly woman. There we go. Right, okay. So that one I've now cut. This one just needs a little trim off it because it's a bit too long. Must be four and a quarter, that measurement, rather than four and a half. There we go. So I'm going to stick all these on before I get muddled up and think that I need more anyway. Oh, I've made more mistakes in this video already than I normally make in doing two or three videos. Hey ho. Right, okay, so take a little bit of Tombow. So I'm going to lay my card out flat to do this. Um, so where's my Tombow? Little pot and a little bit of Tombow on here. It'll come out. This one can't be able to. I had problems with my glue on the other one, and this is a new new Tombow now, so there shouldn't be any problems with it. I did splash out and used a new one. Right, and so that's going there between the score lines and equidistance from each edge. There we go. And this one. There we go. And there we go. This is why I stick to simple cards, because I get very confused with fancy folds and things. Right, okay, and then this one here, going there. Oh, it's looking pretty. I do love this. I know this magenta madness isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I love it. I do like this lovely bright colour. Quite sad to see it go. It's one of our ink colours, so only stays around for a couple of years. It's not one of our main um, family colours. Um, there we go. Right, now we need a panel to go in the on the front here. Um, and I don't think I've... Oh, yes, I have. Three and a half by four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So where's my trimmer again? Three and a quarter by... Let's do this way first. Four and a quarter this way. And once you've done this, you can then decorate your front panel with whatever you like. So you don't have to do the same as me. You can use any, you could use any stamps or dies or whatever, anything that you've got. Um, I'm using the pierced and um, blooms dies, but I really love those. They're rapidly becoming one of my favorite die sets in the catalog. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can use anything you like. In fact, I did show you, um, on my, I think, well, I didn't know if I showed you, but this was the card that I based it on, which I made a couple of years ago, another Mother's Day card. Um, and I used the um, Bouquet Bunch, I think that might be called, from the Beautiful Go Bouquet set. Right, okay. And then this is going on here. This will fit into that section there. So I'm just going to glue that in. These papers are from our family stacks. Um, they're in the catalogue um, with all the DSP. You get a pack that has sheets, um, I think four sheets of each colour in two different designs, double-sided, um, but they're, they're very useful when you want sort of fairly plain, one monotonal papers. We've got beautiful ones coming out with the new catalogue which I have shown you a little bit because they were the free gift with celebration if you joined my team but sadly that's now finished. Right okay so that's our card blank done. 
now we're going to make the um, decoration to go on it. So we need a panel, which is three, two and seven eighths. Better write this down or I'll forget. Two and seven eighths. I was going to do this as a separate video, but I decided not to. Uh, by three and seven eighths. So I'm going to get a piece of Whisper White, or basic white actually. We don't have Whisper White anymore. I don't think that's going to be quite wide enough, is it? I might get away with it actually. I'm going to use I'm going to use this because I've just got this sitting around here. So it's not quite three and seven eighths, but it will be fine. I'm going to do it two and seven eighths and see what that looks like. Oh, I've just cut that the wrong way. Three and seven eighths. Goodness me, I really am not functioning on all cylinders today, am I? I have had a very busy day of doing videos and making projects to show you. Um, obviously can't cope. Right, that's going to be fine. I'm going to do that. So that slightly doesn't quite measure three and seven eight, three and seven eighths. It measures two and two and two. Sorry, it doesn't measure two and seven eighths, it measures two and three quarters, but it's fine. And you can see from my decoration here, there's a little bit of leeway there. Right, okay, so what am I going to do with this? Right, I have die cut already all the bits I need. And you can see we're going very bright here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to arrange the stems so that they're now, obviously, these are too long. I'm going to trim them off in a sec. I'm just going to place them on here till I've decided. So I'm just going to bunch them together. I've done four stems. This again is from a, a still from the same die set, Pierce Blooms. Right. So we're going to do that, and then the main part of the bouquet is going to go over top. So these are going to be scattered over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark these, I think about there would be long enough. So I'm just going to trim them off so they're not quite as long. No idea where my snips are. There they are. Oh, I think I'm going to go down, lie down in a dark room when I finish this video. There we go. So, and I'm just going to mark where the centre of my card is, just so that I know that I'm getting these centred. So two and three quarters um, is one and seven eighths. Is it? No, two and three quarters. It's one and, it's not quite one and a half, it's one and five eighths. One and three eighths. Oh, get it right, Jill. Can't even do maths today. What is wrong with this woman? There we go. I usually, um, before, the, oh, now my glue is leaking. Um, before the pandemic, I was doing some private tuition at home and I was teaching year sixes and it really kept my, actually, I'm going to put some of this on a lid and use a cocktail stick because that just makes it a lot easier to handle when they're doing these tiny little bits. Um, I used to teach um, year six, which is um, 11 year olds in the UK, and they had, they had tests called SATs, standard assessment tests at the end of year six. And so we were teaching to a standard. And it really kept my math skills, my mental math skills on form, because we they had to know all their tables, we had to know fractions, you had to be able to add and subtract really quickly. And of course, to be able to teach them to do it, I had to be able to do it really quickly as well. And I've really noticed seeing that through the pandemic, because I haven't had that practice, that my skills have really gone downhill and I'm, I, I'm not nearly as quick for, as you saw at working out what half of two and three quarters is. Um, I normally would have been able to do that standing on my head. So I think it's a, a combination of lack of practice and old age. So I'm hoping I'm still going to be able enough to go back to teaching them when the pandemic is over. I used to quite like doing that. I only did a few hours a week, but I loved it. Um, 
um, and I'm looking forward to getting back to it really. One of the advantages of teaching one-to-one -one is that you can really focus on what the children need and you can focus on soft skills like persuading them that you know it's not a problem to make a mistake they can you know they can make errors and doesn't matter then getting them to accept things like that is really important in their learning right okay now I've got nine of these flowers three in coastal cavana three in daffodil delight and three in magenta madness and then some centers as well which I've cut so the dies I used let me show you so I used the stem obviously I've used two leaves what this leaf and this leaf and I have then used this little flower, nine of those, and nine little circles like this, dotted circles um, in the centre. Now, of course, you could do a mixed bouquet. You don't have to use all the same flower, but actually I quite like it when it all looks uniform. So, right, so I'm going to do yellow in the middle. Oh, why did that come off? In the middle of the Magenta Madness ones. And then I'm going to swap around. There we go. Oh, no, in the Magenta Madness. Get it in the right colour. Really do seem to be all fingers and thumbs today. No idea why. Definitely time for a cup of tea in a minute, I think. There we go. We've got our live crafting coming tomorrow on our um, Jill and Jez Go Craft. I hope I'm a bit more successful than I am today. Um, on our Jill and Jez Come Crafting with Jill and Jez Facebook page. So if you'd like to join us, um, please um, just sort of find, suss us out on Facebook and um, come and join us over on um, Jill and Jez Go Crafting. March the 6th at 2 p.m. we'll be doing live crafting. And our theme is using a set that is new to us. So a set that I haven't, you haven't seen me use before. Um, so it won't be these pieced piece, piece blooms, because you've seen me use them, obviously. It won't be pretty perennials, because I've used them to death. Um, it will be a set that you haven't seen me use yet. So do pop in for that. I'm not telling you which set it's going to be. Although I will tell you it's another floral set. Um, right, this needs to go on yellow. Um, I seem to be obsessed with florals. I always have been, but m even more so since the spring catalogue came out. I just love all the sets with flowers in. There's some gorgeous sets. And I decided I was trying to do other things, but I, they just don't float my boat as much as the floral ones. So I decided I needed to go with the things that I like um, to demonstrate, because I'm sure if you can see my enthusiasm for them, then it might inspire you as well. <coughs> excuse me right and then just a couple of more magenta madness ones in here to go in, or just one more to go in the coastal cabana one like so right now then took me a while to sort out the placement when I was doing before so I'm going to bring in my sample so what I did was I put four down as a background so I did maybe one, two, three. Should I do a yellow one? Four. And then I filled in the gaps in between with the other. So I think that's what I'm going to do again. So I'm going to start gluing. And five of them on top were raised onto dimensional. So these four that I'm doing now are going to be straight onto the card and then the five on top I raised onto dimensionals so so pretty and I'm loving these colours I did like that pastel one I like I say I'm having a bit of a pastel phase at the minute and I did love those colours but I am loving these brights as well I think at heart I am definitely a brights kind of girl I sometimes get asked by customers, oh, which family should I buy first? Which colour family? And I find it really difficult because I would always go for the brights, but that's not everybody's cup of tea. It's such a personal um, decision. Um, OK, right, there we go. Right, I'm going to do... I'm going to find some dimensionals first. That's what I'm going to do. 
um, and well, maybe a big one, maybe some big ones. I think big ones will fit on the back here and give them a bit of body as well. Um, had a couple of fifth cards damaged in the post just recently, which is awful. Bent corners, and even though I mean, some of them, some of my cards I send out in hard board backed envelopes. But the postal service just seems to be atrocious at the minute here in the UK. You can post some things and they get there the next day and other things take over a week. Doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. I know I know they're struggling with the COVID thing, I know. So I shouldn't be so harsh, but it is frustrating. Uh, right, okay, so I'm going to do a yellow one in the middle here. And then I'm going to do a pink one down the side here. Try and slip it in underneath there. I'm going to do a blue one. You won't be able to do it so that there's no identical colours next to each other, sadly. Um, I'm going to do a yellow one down here. And a pink one. At the top there, magenta one. At the top there. Gorgeous little bunch of flowers. There we go. And then I've just got two leaves here which we're going to put on like this. Quite near the top of the bouquet. And then just the bow to add. Now, I, my other card I made for Mother's Day, obviously I only need one card for Mother's Day. Unfortunately, my husband's mother died a few years back, so we don't need a card for her. Um, and so I'm thinking I won't make this one a Mother's Day card. I'm just wondering what I might make it. I might make it a Get Well Soon card, actually. It's a very nice, bright, cheery one. And what would anyone who's ill like more than lovely but bright bunch of flowers hey right okay and that is going on there so might as well try and use this glue up that i've put on here just to use it up not waste it and there we are right well i'm sorry about all my faux pas today um, i hope it hasn't distracted from your enjoyment of watching it um, and I hope you, oh, here we go. Another one. I can't believe how many things I've done today. Um, there we go. Lovely. Oh, let's just do the sentiment as well. Yes, I'm going to go with, with um, get well soon. Get rid of all these bits, first of all. Don't need those. And I'm going to use get well soon which is from the Timeless Tulips tulip set, which I might have. Have I got it out or have I put it away again? No, I haven't put it away, but I can't see. Oh, there it is under there, is it? Here we go, Timeless Tulip. I have to say, I've only used the sentiment so far. I love these tulips and I've got the punch, so I must get these out and use them. I did make a card last year, which you might have seen, a pop-up explosive box one um, that was Michelle Last's um, design. Um, so I might remake that this year and try and do a little video to show you how to make that. Um, but love them. And so appropriate for spring coming. Uh, right, okay. So I need my Magenta Madness stamp pad. Excuse me while I lean over. This is going to stain my stamp straight away. These pinks always do. Oh, I've got a little strip of card here. That would be great. Um, oh, actually, no. We'll use this one. And try and get this straight. Mm, not bad. And I'm going to bring in my little mini cutter and just trim that off. And just trim the edges. Of course, you could use a punch a little. We've got a little skinny punch, and what's it called? A, Classic, classic label punch, I think, and that can go on there. Does it need a, does it need a, um, a backing? Yeah, actually, I quite like that backing. I'm going to just make a very, very 
thin um, board around it. There we go. And, and then I can just trim that off. You can do it with your trimmer. I must admit, I do find it easier with them. Um, my little trimmer, my mini trimmer, to do little things like this. I've got a bit of glue mark on there, but that will just rub. I'll just use an eraser when it's soon as it's dry, and that will take that off. Oh, that didn't cut very straight. Didn't hold that down enough. Let's take it back in. Oh no, not quite there. That's better. Can you see I've got a little bit, I'm going to leave that to dry though before I try and rub it off. I just because I had a little bit of glue on my hands, but it will come off with an eraser, um, which I will do before I take photos of this for my blog so you can check whether it's been sorted out when you look at my blog. So just a little bit of glue on there. And there we are. So there's our two cards, two fancy fold cards. Get well soon card and a happy Mother's Day card. I know my mum will definitely prefer this colour scheme. She won't like these bright colours. Um, she will prefer these pastel ones. But I've, I'm sure there'll be a friend so quite soon who might need a get well card. I've so many, like I've said, I've sent so many cards out recently for friends who've got COVID can't believe how many people have gone down with it. Anyway, so that's me for today. Just a quick reminder, the host code, the shop, monthly shopping code Z7RVG6EA. Um, use that and I can send you a, a free gift. All of my customers get a little thank you package anyway. You'll get a handmade card and a little um, handmade, you know, hand package gift. But you also get a product gift if you use my code. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it, despite or despite all my, um, I don't know what to call them actually, errors, faux pas, I don't know. Um, anyway, that's it from me today. I'm going to go for a lie down in a darkened room, I think. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.